Hi, it's Therese and I'm here for Alter New and this is a take two with Therese. It's a new feature that I'm doing with Alter New and what I thought I'd do today was watercolour in two ways. So I've got this stamp set which is called Always There and it is a layering stamp set but I'm just going to be using the outlined flower images and watercolouring them. Now the two ways that I want to watercolour, I want to use the water brush, the watercolour brush markers. So this is the Spring Garden set and I'm also going to be using the watercolour, it's the 36 half pans that were released a little bit earlier this year. Now I've already stamped my images out and I have used the permanent black ink and the reason why I have already stamped them out is because if I'm going to be doing watercolouring I need to let them dry for at least 20 minutes. I'm also going to be using the medium size watercolour brush. This holds the water in the barrel and Alton you have three different sizes of these and I've got some paper towel too. So what I think is one of the best things about the watercolour brush markers is that you can just paint directly with them onto your cardstock. Now one of the tricks is to make sure you use a cardstock that will help you blend those colors so what I've got here is the Bristol Smooth cardstock and that gives you plenty of time to mix your colors I'm doing that on the actual petals as I'm painting them and then what I like to do is to come in with my water brush and dilute it out and actually get the petals um, get my gradient of color that way you don't have to mix it with water you can actually just paint directly on the cardstock with the water brush markers it depends how vibrant you want the color now these brushes just clean off you can squeeze the barrel and push some water out and wipe it on paper towel or you can also um, use it in a water well the it's like any sort of water coloring you don't you should avoid coloring areas that are directly beside where you've colored previously Although I do find that the water brush markers tend to dry a lot quicker than watercolour paints. The, they, because they don't like to move as much, I uh, do work in smaller areas. So I will just usually just do a petal at a time. Now the two colours I've used here on the flowers are the Midnight Violet and the Dusk. So the Dusk is actually a dark blue and that's what I'm using for my shadow color so that's the color that I'm putting right in against the stamen of the flower because it's the center of the flower and that's where the shadows are going to be there is also going to be shadows in the folds of the pe petals as well but it's watercolor it is meant to look a little bit loose and I also like to leave some white areas as well and I'll just do that by not moving the paint in that certain area. So I've used the moss and limeade for the leaves and there are two different leaf sizes in this set. I just came in with the moss on the bigger leaf. I just came in with the moss and added it to the center and then actually used the limeade marker. You won't contaminate the markers by mixing them on the cardstock like this. Um, you can simply just clean them off by painting them off on a piece of cardstock or like I'm doing here on the paper towel on the side. The other way that I did the leaves, I was going to say flowers wasn't I? <laughs> the other way that I did the leaves was um, to make a lighter leaf. So I added less of the moss colour, um, a little bit more of the limeade and then just used the water to blend it out and that gave me a lot lighter colour leaf. I'm doing the same here. I am actually leaving some white tips on the edges of the leaf. So now that these petals are dry, I'm coming in um, to do the petals that are behind the others that I've already colored. The other way that you can do this is to heat, emboss, heat emboss your image and then there's really no delays because the heat embossing gives you a well that basically holds your paints within the petals or leaves or whatever you happen to be coloring then you don't have to wait for each section to dry before you come and do the next one 
and because I have a few flowers to color because I wasn't sure how many I was going to use and I wanted to practice and have some fun coloring as we do <laughs> I um, just colored the other flower that you can see there while I waited for this one to dry I think this is a really pretty color this midnight violet this set has a lot of bright colors in it which is good because that gives you lots of options because you can always make a bright color lighter so that gives you a lot of colors within a color so the center of the flower I just used the warm sunshine direct to paper again I have waited for this to dry and then sort of where the stamen come up from the center I'm just adding the moss green and then I did actually dilute that with a bit of water as well so now I'm going to work on my watercolor flowers I've got a palette these are from Altenew there's two different sizes this is the smaller one and I have my other group of flowers now and what I'm doing here is actually picking the paint up off the half pan so I've activated it with a little bit of water you can spray the pans first that probably would would be easier <laughs> I didn't do it that way and I did find that my watercolor brush um, the bristles stained from these paints but the color didn't hold on them even though that they were stained they didn't transfer color I just couldn't you know I added so much color to this these petals that um, there I couldn't actually wash that paint stain off the end of the bristles but it doesn't matter because the colors not transferred now I still wanted to achieve a vibrant color because I wanted this to be fairly similar so I am using the same colors here I've got the midnight violet and the dusk yet again and oh there's my little Lily <laughs> <laughs> her name's Lilith and she's very shy and you don't usually get to see her on film she walks straight in the blue paint and then walked it all over my table <laughs> a few times I think I might have but I did edit that out and what I'm finding I do with the watercolors is I try and make it vibrant too quick and watching myself paint here now that's what I've done rather than taking my time and building up layers a bit better like doing a thinner layer of color waiting for it to dry doing another layer of color I'm trying to go straight for the vibrant here <laughs> and these watercolors have some sort of opacity to them so what I found was I was losing the lines and the definition of the petals and the leaves as well but I'll um, show you how I get around that in a moment it's the same sort of technique though basically I just painted the petals let it dry and then um, came back and added another layer they do paint quite differently to the watercolor brush markers and personally I find the brush markers easier <laughs> to use maybe that's because I'm not as confident with painting and I'm certainly um, don't normally use a water water brush like this too but it is convenient because I don't have to keep sort of um, picking water up you have got some control um, because you can squeeze the barrel and get more water out and clean to clean the brush as well but um, that's another learning curve I was doing while I was painting here as well Now the watercolors in this set don't have the moss um, or limeade color it's so what I actually substituted was the frayed leaf and the bamboo color I did use the warm sunshine and the frayed leaf in the center of the flower there though and I do find that the colors dry lighter so in retrospect I probably would have used a dark green I just wanted to try and keep a bit true to the colors that I'd used in the with the water brush markers I have the coordinating dies and when I did stamp these images out I made sure that I stamped them out far enough apart that I can actually run them through my die cutting machine in one foul swoop 
And the other thing I did was actually stamp them with my Misty. And this is what saved me here. I These are the ones done with the watercolour pans, half pans. And like I said, I did lose some definition in the petals. So by coming back in and re-stamping them with the black ink, I think that really made a very big difference. All right, so I'm getting my card bases ready now, or designs ready now. I have two pieces of design paper from now this is the celebrations paper pack and I've stamped out a couple of the leaves and flowers um, in sort of a random looks fairly random but it's going to be part of my bouquet and a couple of sentiments so these pieces of design paper are cut to the same size as my card front and the sentiments are taken from the garden hydrangea set and the magnolias for her so I did use the Misty here because it's design paper I found I had to actually stamp it out a couple of times to get a good coverage but it um, they stamped and held up really well the black ink the permanent black ink is the one I use there and all that's left to do now is to create my bouquets I did a combination of um, tape runner so adhering it direct to the card to the card front and also use some pop dots, pop dots and foam squares just to give it a little bit of um, dimension and I think they turned out similar but there are differences in the two but I do enjoy using both mediums I just think I find the water brush markers for me a little bit easier and I found their colors were a little bit more vibrant so it looks like I need to practice more with my watercolor pan set so you'll be seeing more of them from me so they're my finished cards don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel I did add some sequins there as well so looking forward to seeing you here next time and if you've got any suggestions that you'd like to see for the take two from me let me know in the comments down below bye